Welcome to the episode of uh, Jay Leno's Book Club. Remember, no self-help, no weight loss, just stuff that rolls, explodes, and makes noise. And we're here with Rinzi Mills, who is the author of Carol Shelby, The Authorized Biography. As you can see, this isn't one of those little sort of ones you get in the bookstore that just has, a, you know, a, oh, 50 or 60 pages and a lot of pictures. This is an authorized, in-depth biography. You knew Carol very well. I knew him pretty well. I first knew him. I first saw Carol when he tested the first Cobra. I actually met him about, would have been four years after that, when I was at art school mm -hmm. and I had <clears throat> bought an old pre-war AC sports car and I used to go up to the AC factory at Thames Ditton to get spare parts, which you still could get from them at the time, cylinder head gaskets, this right. kind of deal. And there was Carol Shelby one day. And Shelby, I would say, was discussing the 427 Cobra. Then we'd bump into each other occasionally, but I, he wouldn't have, I wouldn't have figured on his radar at all. Uh, I suppose I got to know him better probably eight, nine years ago. We were talking one day and he was joshing around with one of my Cobra books. And I think I'd called it AC Cobra something. Right. So he couldn't resist getting hold of it, right. crossing out the AC and right. putting Shelby on it. There are so many Shelby biographies out there, and a lot of them are just filled with nonsense. Mm. Um, just silly stories. Uh, and like you mentioned, for example, that uh, he was not a womanizer or a carouser. No. No, no. He's just a, a regular guy. But Women that, liked him because yeah, he was yeah. a particularly, you know, when he was younger, because he was a handsome right. film star kind and of And a Texan in, in Great mm. Britain. What's better than that, really? Mm. Yeah, so that's like a, a guy from, that's like James Bond here in America. You know, same thing, the big hat and the overalls and the whole deal. So when did he say, I want you to write the authorized biography? He was, as I just said, joshing around with one of the books that I'd written. He said, but you do get it right about the Cobras, mm. which was complimentary. And uh, so I said, well, someone should get it right with you, Carol, the right. story of your life. And so we both agreed that it should be the authorised biography. Right. That can be taken both ways. You know, some people would say, oh, right, you're just going to write what he tells you to right. well, whitewash. Well, but, but as we were talking earlier, you know, I just got the book, so I've not had a chance to read it yet. But as you, as you were telling me, he was a great, uh, sort of, well, he was a character. And there were a lot of stories about him. A lot of them started by him. Yeah. And in this book, you tell the truth about those stories, correct? I hope so. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's stuff that's not in there right. because the book was way too long anyway. The publishers were jumping up and down. Right. I could have done another two, three hundred pages, but you would have not been able to lift it. Well, that's okay. I, I find him uh, fascinating. You know, he's an American icon. And as we get more and more into corporate automobiles, the idea of one person designing a car, Bugatti, Bentley, Duesenberg, Ferrari, Carroll Shelby, one, one man's name or one man's vision of a car gets further and further away just because uh, smog and crash testing and all this kind of thing. Carol's big thing was, how much more horsepower we, can we get in this? When he was doing the Mustangs and whatnot, Ford would say, well, that's enough. Oh, no, no, we need more, mm. we need more. Even the new, even the new uh, Ford Mustang that has 660 horsepower, I think the Shelby version has 800 or 1,000 horsepower. And you do a lot of the early life here as well, correct? Goes right from his first memory yeah. uh, to through his Air Force days in the war. Um, he did a little liquor heist, you'll find, when, he, as a teenager, he was yeah. a getaway driver. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I never a, knew that. He was a bad boy. Well, yeah. that was an old school friend of his told me that. Uh, he couldn't wait to tell me that, but he was called Bailey Gordon. He okayed it with Carol, and Carol was a good sport. They got shot at, but no one got hit. Yeah. A lot of people have said, or, or it will be said, Oh, where's all the pictures? Where's all the pictures? Well, you'll know a biography doesn't yeah. have a stuff. Right. But we well, are doing a photobiography book. I mean, that's the one reason, it, just picking the book up and thumbing through it today, that's the one thing I liked, that it's not all pictures. Because quite frankly, I've seen every Cobra. I've seen every shot of Carol standing next to Cobras. Yeah. I'm a little tired of that, and it's a bit more in depth. They don't call England a nation of scribes for nothing. The English, to me, are the best writers in the world. 
you know, I had a, a friend of mine who came in one day with a book. He was quite elderly. When he was a kid, he lived near the airfields during World War II, and he wrote down the tail number of every plane, every bomber that landed, and what time it landed, and what the plane looked like, and, you know, all the details around it. And it was this thick, and I just thought, nobody does this but the English. Train spotting with aeroplanes. Yeah, uh, nobody does this but the English. You know, the, uh, the English will put out a biography that's, how, what is this, 500 and something pages? Easy. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, almost, six, almost 600 pages. Almost every Carol Shelby biography I've read is 200 at the most, 250. My favorite part is probably with the Shelby Mustangs, because when I was a kid, I was 16 in 1966, and the Shelby Mustang had just come out, and it was sort of my favorite car, the Mustang, and then Carol took it and made it something even more. And my favorite thing about Shelby was he took cars that regular guys could get, could own, or aspire to, and made them faster. You know, he didn't take Ferraris and Corvettes that cost a lot of money and make them fast. He took, oh, even like the GLH, the little silly Chrysler. Yeah, the little Dodges. Yeah, called it goes like hell. Hmm. I mean, what corporate American company would let you call a car goes like hell? But he could pull it off. Or the GT350 or even the new Mustang, you know. You notice Carroll Shelby did not modify the Ford GT. He modified the Mustang because he wanted a car that your average blue collar guy, if he worked hard and put in some overtime, could one day own. And, and get it fixed in a normal Ford dealership. Yeah, yeah that, that was... That, that was, was, you know, his... Because he'd seen, when he was racing the Ferraris and things with John Edgar and Tony Paravano and those right. guys, he'd seen the, the way that they were treated, the high-handed way that Enzo treated them about spare right. parts, etc., and flying stuff over. Yeah. And, and he'd seen the pitfalls in yeah. that, although there's a lot of kudos in having a Ferrari at that time. Right, right. And then, of course, and also he'd seen, he'd driven Old Yeller, which you'll, you'll know that car. Max Bolchowski. Yeah, exactly. I know Max as well, yeah. 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 Now, he'd, Shelby raced that a couple of times. He didn't do any good with it. He pulled the Moss gearbox out of it one yeah. time. Ma Max Bolchowski was a guy who lived here in Los Angeles who built cars using Buick 401s. He liked Nail heads, yeah. Yeah, Buick nail head engines. They were basically hot rods with one white wall tire and three black wall tires, and he raced them against Maseratis and Ferraris and won and beat them. You know, I mentioned that there aren't that many pictures, but there are quite a few pictures in the book. I don't give the impression of anything. And there are quite a few here that I've never seen. I've never seen this one in Riverside. Never saw that picture before. Have a look at the first picture in the book. It might make you laugh. Well, look at this Jim Dandy looking character here. He looks like some Dickensian looking character. Look at that. I imagine Shelby himself provided some of these photos. Pretty much all the photos are from his own and his family's collection. There's some paintings by his old friend, Bill Neal. Have you got any Bill Neal? I know up? Bill Neal, okay. sure, sure, right. sure. Now, Bill helped me tremendously with the book, you know, and Shelby wanted some of Bill's paintings in there, so we put about three or four of them in, uh, and there'll be more in the photobiography that's coming out later. The last time you saw him, how soon after that did he pass away? I saw him right at the end of March, Jay. Um, March of 2012. Oh, yeah, this yeah. year. And yeah. as I recall, he'd been in Cedar sinai and I think he was in Reagan. And he was not in good shape. Uh, it was kind of like not if, it was when, you know, yeah, to, yeah. Be, to be frank. And uh, he was then moved to... Dallas for various reasons, yeah. to Baylor in Dallas, and uh, well, it would have been six weeks before he went. He went yeah. on May the right. 10th, didn't he? Yeah. He'd had a good life, though. Oh, he was And a he character. wouldn't have wanted to... He was fighting. He was... You could... But we've all got to go sometime, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is a fascinating book. I'm anxious to read it. And this is the book that Carol wanted. And as I said, authorized biography, he's a little a little prickly, thinking people might think it's some washed over thing. But this is what Carol wanted. These are the words he wanted. And he wanted to correct a lot of the silly sort of stories and myths that were uh, said about him. And he created many of them himself, as you yeah. said. He was a great showman, you know, race car driver, P.T. Barnum, real character. I always remember when I, uh, I went to see him when he built the uh, Aurora-powered sports car. Oh, yeah. And uh, he the, said... Uh, the Series 1. Series one. He goes, Jay, this is the greatest car I've ever built. You know, I, I, I kind of looked and I said, really? 
You know, you just see, he, he didn't look me in the eye. <laughs> I've not been too kind about that, but yeah, I... But, but, but I mean, that's the kind mm. of guy he was. Whatever he was involved in, it was the greatest. And then you had to sort of do your homework a little bit. Mm. But, you know, uh, he was a character. That's what he did. You know, and, and people call him a con man. I say, well, you're only a con man if you don't have a good product. Like he had one Cobra, and he would paint it different colors and send it out to give the appearance. No, he never did that. It's, that's a, one of the myths. Oh, is that one of the myths? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Okay, there you go. I have told that story myself. Tell me. Well, in there, Jay, there's a color picture, and it was painted a kind of pearlescent yellow, I would call it. Right. Uh, it has been repainted, mm -hmm. and it's now blue. I guess you've seen the car. Right, right. But it was not painted many, many colors. It came to yeah. the States early in 62, and then it was many months before they got the first of the cars. Some of them went east. Yeah, yeah. Herbie Hancock had one of the early but cars. Herbie or... still has this car. I know. I spoke to Herbie the other day. Well, see, that's one of those rumors that I am guilty of spreading because Car Carol himself told me, <laughs> told me that one time. Like a they long did time ago. paint cars yeah. different colors, but they didn't <laughs> put that in yeah. the sh in the shop and like paint it. You know, one color one week, one color yeah. the other, because it went around all the shows as right. a yellow car, and right. it was the only one at that time. Well, see, there you go, there you go. I've been corrected in my own show. Whether... And there'll be a whole load of people who disagree, and you'll get flack yeah, for I will. having me I will. on the show. But that's why. But this again, those are the kind of things that Carol wanted corrected, and they're all in this book, Carol Shelby, the author of biography. Where can they get it? Anywhere? Do you have a website? I don't have a website. Okay. You do. I have a website, yeah. <laughs> well, you can get it at, at get Auto it. Books on Magnolia in Burbank, California. And the, this is the last guy in America not to have a website. So that in itself is, uh, is quite Yeah, but a you get people emailing you then with trivia, like, oh, you know, why yeah, is the... You see, one of those English quirky characters, no website, just got a telephone six weeks ago, correct? Yeah, just no TV a, in the no house. No TV, no telephone. A nation of scrap, pen and ink, and it's all in here. Lindsay, thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, thank you.